chapter twenty six of the forbidden way by george gibbs this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by tony oliva the call of the heart larry caught up with jeff outside the elevator shaft where he found him striding up and down like a caged beast jeff entered the car in a daze and followed larry blindly across the huge lobby downstairs and out of doors to a motor which was waiting for them at the curb larry was still bewildered at the surprising conclusion of their visit and eyed his companion sharply but jeff sat with folded arms looking neither to the right nor left as they whirled through the city streets and out into the high road the hunted look in jeff's eyes warned larry not to speak so he sat beside his partner patiently and waited suddenly without moving jeff's great hand shot out and clinched larry's knee like a vice he he's my father larry said jeff hoarsely my father do you understand i didn't want him to know larry put his hand over jeff's and gripped it hard he knew what other people in mesa city knew of jeff's birth but no words occurred to him the information had taken his breath away i didn't want him to know jeff went on i wanted to wait to tell him myself when things had broken right for us i wanted to win to show him i was his master not to come crawling and licking his boots for mercy i'll not do it now either by g d he can break me to pieces but he'll never own me i never was his i never will be he hasn't broken us yet jeff he can't keep us out of pueblo we're going to win i tell you we've got to win larry groaned jeff we've got to win that conspiracy charge me piffle said larry don't worry they've bought fritz weil he's not a competent witness i can prove it jeff sank back again his gaze on the mountains he'd send me to canyon city to the penitentiary if he could and he's my father larry bit his lip but didn't reply for his mind was working rapidly he had a perspective on the situation which had been denied to jeff and the vista did not seem unpleasant he was prepared to fight for jeff's interests and his own to the bitter end but he was too keen a lawyer and too sound a philosopher not to know the value of compromise and in spite of himself it was his legal mind which grasped the essentials of jeff's relation to their common enemy what would be the effect of this astonishing revelation on the mind of general bent he did not dare speak of this to jeff who in his present mood could only misinterpret him but he was still thinking of it when the car drew up at the steps at wetherall's big bungalow palace gretchen and their hostess met the arrivals at the door and jeff followed them in slowly he wanted to be alone again to think and here was sanctuary gretchen paused at the entrance to the morning room and taking jeff by the arm opened the door pushed him in quickly and closed it behind him and while jeff was wondering what it all meant he heard a step beside him felt the timid touch of a hand on his sleeve and found his eyes looking down into camilla's jeff she was whispering they told me you needed me and so i came to you do you want me he looked at her mistily for the misfortunes which hung about him had dulled his perceptions it seemed strange that she should be there but he experienced no surprise at seeing her yes i want you he said absently of course i want you he fingered the hand on his sleeve and patted it gently as he would have done a child's but she saw with pain that the tragedy of his birth now overshadowed all other issues if he was thinking of her at all it was of the other camilla the camilla he had known longest the gingerbread woman that she had been it hurt her but she knew that it was her own fault that he could not think otherwise 
she took his hand in her own warm fingers and held it closely against her breast jeff dear look at me i'm not the woman that i used to be i'm the real camilla now the camilla you always hoped i'd be i'm changed something has happened to me i want you to understand i'm not a graven image now jeff i'm just your wife he looked at her bewildered but in her eyes he saw that what she said was true they were different eyes from the ones he had known softened darker and looked up into his own pleadingly wet with compassion the tender compelling eyes of a woman whose soul is awakened she released his hand and threw her arms around his neck lifting her face to his don't you understand jeff i want you i want you i've never wanted anybody else his arms tightened about her and their lips met she was tangible now no mere image to be worshipped from afar but a warm idol of flesh and blood to be taken into one's heart and enshrined there camilla girl is it true yes she whispered it has always been true only i didn't know it i love you jeff i love you oh how i love you better than myself better than all the world do you realize it now he took her head between his hands and held it away so that he might look deep into her eyes and be sure their lashes dropped once or twice and hid them but that made them only the more lovely when they opened again for in them he read the whole measure of his happiness and hers yes it's true i know it now you've never looked at me like that never before he bent her head forward and would have kissed her as he sometimes used to do on the forehead but she would not let him no that kiss the cold kiss of homage jeff i don't want to be venerated you're not to kiss me like that again ever my lips they're yours jeff my lips no one else no never they're yours so he took them and in their sweetness for a while he found forgetfulness of his bitterness at last she led him to a big chair by the window made him sit and sank on the floor at his feet you're not going back to kansas he asked anxiously she smiled not unless you want me to he drew her into his arms again i'll never want you to i want you here close close my girl you must never leave me again jeff i've suffered so i couldn't stand seeing you i thought you loved she put her fingers over his lips and would not let him finish no not now don't speak of that it's all a nightmare but you must never leave me again i want to be with you always i want to take my half of your troubles his head bowed the grasp of his hands relaxed and his eyes stared into vacancy my troubles yes there are a lot of them perhaps you won't care for me so much when i'm down and out camilla i suppose i ought to tell you he my father is going to have me indicted for conspiracy about the mines he's going to try to jail me if he can she started up terror-stricken oh he couldn't even he couldn't do a thing like that oh yes he could grimly he has bribed rhymer and fritz weil they swear i tried to murder max but you didn't jeff tell me you didn't she said tremulously you know you never told me what happened and i feared you were desperate in those days and lawless i'm desperate and lawless yet he muttered but i'd never try to kill a man just for money we offered max rhymer a share in the mine a good share but he wanted to hog it all i told him he was a drunken fool and he tried to shoot me mulrennan struck him and knocked him out i wouldn't be here now if he hadn't i don't know why i never told you i suppose i thought you wouldn't understand i left mulrennan trying to bring him around and went down and bought that lease that's all thank god she crooned i've been so afraid there have been so many stories 
lies all lies circulated by him now he's got rymer to swear to them she threw her arms around his neck and searched his face anxiously jeff he can't make people believe he wants to ruin me and he'll do it if he can there's no telling what money will do he squeezed conrad seemuller and made him a bankrupt seemuller drank himself to death jimmy ott blew out his brains oh don't be afraid i'm not going to do either i'm not going to be crushed like a worm if he ruins me he'll pay dear for the privilege i'll drag him down with me and he'll drop farther than i will i wanted to keep things quiet but i won't any longer i'll tell the world my story his story and let the world judge between us he tramped up and down the floor like a madman until camilla interposed and led him to a divan he followed her like a child and let her sit beside him while she questioned him as to what had happened jeff had looked for sanctuary and he had found it at last the other people in the house did not disturb them and they sat for a long time alone exchanging the confidences which had been so long delayed but they were none the less sweet on that account late in the afternoon camilla questioned jeff again about the happenings of the morning rita cheyne's part in the situation did not surprise her she knew that rita had heard everything and had decided to continue to play the game with fate in jeff's behalf but she did not tell jeff so when he questioned her she told him what had happened at the kenny house after he had left oh jeff i don't know how i could have misjudged you so rita opened my eyes why she chose to do it i don't know she's a strange woman i can't quite make her out even now she's half angel half vixen but i'll never forget her never camilla put her hand over jeff's suddenly that money jeff you must pay her back that money if you have to sell the mine i can't sell the mine not now it would clean me out i don't care she pleaded i don't want money it has brought nothing but unhappiness to either of us i want to begin all over again i've learned my lesson i look back to the old days and wonder what i could have been dreaming of i've seen all i want of the world happiness belongs in the heart no amount of money can buy it a place there i want to be poor again with you give him give general bent what he wants jeff that will satisfy him won't it please jeff for my sake sell out the smelter and the mine never jeff's jaw set and he rose putting her aside almost roughly i'll never give them up while i've an ounce of blood to fight his tongue faltered and was silent camilla followed his startled gaze through the open window at an automobile from the tonneau of which a man hurriedly descended what can it mean jeff was asking as though to himself court bent what does he want it's very curious camilla said slowly to see you when bent came into the room a moment later they were both aware of the imminence of important revelations camilla had not seen him for two months and she was conscious of a slight sense of shock at his appearance jeff too noted that he was very pale and that in his eyes there hung a shadow of the misfortune that had marked them all at the door cortland turned to mrs berkeley who had met him in the hall if you don't mind gretchen i'd like to speak to him alone and when camilla would have gone no camilla it concerns you too while they wondered what was coming he walked past camilla and put a hand on jeff's shoulder the lines in his face softening gently they've told me jeff i know i've come to offer you my hand and as jeff still stared at him uncertainly you won't refuse it will you there was a nobility in the simple gesture a depth of meaning in the quiet tones of his voice 
camilla alone knew what those few words were costing him and she watched jeff who was standing as though he had been turned to stone his head bent forward upon his breast his deep-set eyes peering under his brows as general bent's had often done his eyes found cortland's at last searching them keenly but he found in them only a small bright flame of fellowship among the embers of regret jeff's fingers twitched a little then his hand came forward impulsively and the two men clasped hands i'm sorry jeff i am from the bottom of my heart i want you to understand i do said jeff with difficulty i didn't want you to know i'm glad i think it's better so he paused a moment before going on i want i want you and camilla to go right back with me can you that's what i came to ask father is ill ill stammered jeff a stroke of apoplexy the sudden shock of discovering all this jeff and camilla started forward with one impulse of horror rita and aunt caroline were with him and rita had told him the truth the doctors are there he has recovered consciousness but his left side is paralyzed completely paralyzed jeff sank heavily in a chair and buried his face in his hands what do the doctors say asked camilla anxiously that he is very sick that's all nobody can tell i've wired chicago for a specialist we can only wait and hope it's pretty desperate i know that he's an old man and he's grown older lately court stopped speaking and walked to the window while camilla watched him pityingly he wasn't like the old court she used to know and yet there was something inexpressibly appealing in his gentleness which reminded her of the moods in him she had liked the best she glanced at jeff his head was still buried in his hands and he had not moved but camilla knew that this startling revelation was causing a rearrangement in all jeff's ideas in that moment she prayed that jeff's bitterness might be sweetened that the tragedy which had suddenly stalked among them might soften his heart to pity for the old man who was his father and his enemy cortland turned and spoke with an effort will you come back with me jeff when he first recovered consciousness he spoke your name he has been asking for you ever since he wants jeff's eyes peered above his trembling fingers he asked for me he said hoarsely yes he wants to see you jeff's head sank into his hands again he wants to see me i can't seem to realize it's true he asked me to bring you there was a long period of silence during which jeff's long bony fingers clasped and unclasped back of his head as he struggled with himself i can't he groaned at last i can't it has been too long too much he straightened in disorder and went on wildly why he has dogged my steps for months used all his genius and cunning to do away with me tried to rid himself of me as he did years ago and even hired men to swear my liberty away his head dropped into his hands again and he leaned forward his elbows on his knees no i can't court i can't it's too much to ask too much cortland stood in the middle of the floor his arms folded head bent waiting for the storm to pass his own pain engulfed in the greater pain of the man before him he did not try to answer jeff for there was no answer to be made it was not a moment for words and he knew he had no right even to petition it was a matter for jeff's heart alone a heart so long embittered that even if it refused this charity cortland could not find it in his own heart to condemn with a glance at cortland 
camilla went over to jeff and laid her fingers lightly on his shoulder jeff she said with gentle firmness you must go to your father but as he did not move she went on you forget he did not know perhaps if he had known he would have tried to make atonement before do you realize what it means for a man like general bent to make such a request at such a time you can't refuse jeff you can't jeff moved his head and stared for a long time at the fireplace his fingers clenched on the chair arms turning at last to cortland do you uh, do you think he'll die he asked what do they say his heart is bad said cort gravely i don't know a man of father's years seldom recovers from a thing like that but it was camilla who interposed she stepped between the two men and took jeff by the arm cort can't go back without you jeff she said passionately don't you see that he can't you've got to go if your father died to-night you'd never forgive yourself he may have done you a wrong but god knows he's trying to right it now you've got to let him cortland watched them a moment then suddenly straightened and glanced at his watch i can't stay here any longer he said i've got to go back to him there is much to be done and i'm the only one to do it this is my last plea not that of a dying man's son for his father but of a brother to a brother for the father of both come back with me jeff not for his sake but for your own it is your own blood that is calling you pitifully you can't refuse jeff struggled heavily to his feet and passed his hands across his eyes and then with a sudden sharp intake of his breath he turned to cortland his lips trembling i'll go he said hoarsely if he wants me i'll go cort something is drawing me something inside me that awoke when you told me what had happened i've been fighting against it the habit of thirty years was fighting it but i've got to go i'd be cursed if i didn't you're sure he really wants me cort chapter twenty six